So the concept covered in this session is first principles modeling. And the example that we'll be taking is about tank in series. So more specifically, we'll look at the two tank process. So if you have a tank, liquid is coming in, liquid is going out, and that's going into another tank, and again, the outlet from the tank is going out. We have level here, level here, this is our H1, level 2, this tank area is A1, this tank area is A2, let's denote this to be F1I, this one to be F1O, and this to be F2O. Now I want to find a model for the process. Now finding a model itself just find a model doesn't make any sense when you to specify what exactly you want to do. So that is start with the step one of this modeling objective is that what is the objective? So first need to define the objective for this overall exercise. So say for this case we want to find a model between level of liquid in tank 2 to the flow rate in, in tank 1. So if you have a valve there, somehow you want to manipulate that valve to maintain the level in tank 2. So you want to find a model between H2 and F1I. So develop model between So in this case, what we have here, we want to manipulate this one. So that's our input and this is our output. So to find this input output model. So defining that objective, we come to the next step is that gather process information and knowledge. Now, so for this case, simple process information, we may have that how this input affects the output. So we have F1i that affects H1 because if we increase the flow rate here, that will increase the level here and then this H1 affects F1O and this F1O affects it. So that's the information about the relation among the process variable we have. So this one, so we need to establish, to establish the link between H2 and F1I, we need to establish the link between F1i and H1, then H1 to F1o and then F1 to H2. So that's the link we want to establish. So that's about the process knowledge we get. Also, we need some information, for example, what is A1, meaning the A2, these are, and the valve characteristics, simply what are the relation between this outlet flow and the valve. So we know that from the process knowledge that F1 naught, it's directly proportional to a square root of H1. So that gives you something like F1 naught, we'll write something C1, H1, where this C1, it depending on valve characteristic. Also like F2O, we can write it some other constant, H2. So again, C2 is the valve or the flow rate or the pipe dimensions here. <clears throat> now that's the process knowledge and information we have. Then the step three is about the main part that is a develop model equations. And for this case, we need to know that, okay, we need to use the what is called this conservation principles. So we have three conservation laws if you recall, the conservation of mass, 
conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. But that for this case, conservation of momentum will not be valid like most processes. Conservation of energy is not valid here because we don't see any temperature variable here. So conservation of energy will not also be important. So conservation of mass is the only relevant conservation equation we have. So we know that we have two conservation of mass equation. One is for the overall mass balance and another is for the component balance. Now see for this case we have only one liquid. Maybe you can assume that to be water. Whatever that liquid is, if we consider only single liquid, the component balance is also not important. So the only balance equation we need is what is called this mass and we need the, the so-called overall mass balance. Three terms, accumulation, I am writing it just simple way but in a proper form this will be rate of accumulation of mass equals rate of mass in minus rate of mass out okay so if we look at all these three terms here so what is the mass within the tank 1 and tank 2 so we need to write down the equations for these two processes now so for tank 1 we can write in the tank is v1 and the density is rho this gives us the mass and its rate of change with time the accumulation will be mass in will be the liquid coming in through f1i and going out through f1o so it will be rho f1i minus rho f1o now if you assume a constant density and a cross-sectional area which is constant then you can simplify that equation before going to that let's look at the other equations so now the second relation we have is the relation between f1 naught and h1 okay but for tank 2 based on that relation we can write we have the coming in is f1 o going out is rho f2 oh. now we have the other relations here this one this one and then you can assume the constant density and the cross-sectional area to be not a function of level for both of the tanks we can simplify that equation the first one rho v1 we can write rho a1 h1 and for constant a and then constant and principles for this two tank process now based on the process knowledge this we can further simplify the set of equations to get it in a more or direct form so if you know that for this tank or for this tank the cross-sectional area does not depend on the level and you can assume a constant density of the liquid here based on that we can have for this tank 1 we have this in a form a1 dh1 dt and now we'll express this in terms of t just for the purpose of simplification i don't put the function of t terms there but if you can write it now here it will be minus c1 And if you simply rearrange, we'll get T. Also, I can put the equation here. This one, the relation between outlet for the, for the tank 1 and its corresponding level. So it will be the second tank. I can similarly write it down A2 over dt plus now all this equation together forms the model of the process now you see that for this one each of these equations here so this one corresponding to this relation the second one corresponding to this relation the third one corresponding to this relation 
Now, although this is a simple example, going through step by step and establishing the link and deriving an equation corresponding to each of those link is valuable. So that for a complex process, you do not lose the link. Now, this equation itself is not a direct relation between F1, Fi0 and H2 yet. So when you do that part, so step four will be this simplification and what is called this standardization. So we need to express the model in a standard form. We see how to do that. And step five will be analysis and validation. Okay, so that will record the solution. Now I'm not going to step four and five. We'll cover a few more examples to derive this uh, model equation, which is mainly the bulk partition in step three, and then we'll go to the solution and simplification in the next few weeks time.